Good evening, I'm Cenk Uger, live from Los Angeles. We've got another controversy now. Today, President Obama chose not to release the photos of Osama bin Laden's body. The president said, quote, it is important to make sure that very graphic photos of somebody who was shot in the head are not floating around as an incitement to additional violence or as a propaganda tool. He also said, quote, we don't trot out this stuff as trophies. We don't need to spike the football. The fact of the matter is, you will not see bin Laden walking on this earth again. Now, that's interesting because uh, that directly contradicts the statement the CIA director, Leanne Panetta, made yesterday in an interview with NBC. The government uh, obviously has been uh, talking about how best to do this, but uh, I don't think there's, there was any question that ultimately uh, a photograph uh, would be presented to, to the public. So, of course, that's opened up a question as to whether we should or should not see the pictures. Since President Obama is on one side, well, you want to guess which side Sarah Palin is going to go on? Believe it or not, she disagrees with the president. I didn't see that coming. She tweeted, quote, show photo as warning to others seeking America's destruction. No pussyfooting around, no politicking, no drama. It's part of the mission. A very ironic tweet, given that she's politicking by saying that. But look. Others I take a little bit more seriously, like Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham uh, is a senator from South Carolina, of course, and he tweeted out, uh, the whole purpose of sending our soldiers into the compound rather than an aerial bombardment obtain indisputable proof of bin Laden's death. Actually, that was not a tweet. That was just a statement. And look, that's not a bad point. The problem with the pictures from Abu Ghraib, for example, was that they wasn't the pictures themselves I, they caused us a lot of trouble but it was because of what we did in the pictures in this case we killed a guy who killed nearly th three thousand americans look if it offends you to see him with a bullet in his head you should have tried to talk him out of 9-11 a little earlier that's my take on it but i want to bring in other voices now joining me now is congressman adam schiff he's a democrat from california he serves on the intelligence committee congressman great to have you here thank you First, let me start. I mean, look, Saxby Chambliss, among others, have said, look, this is obviously going to come out at some point. Should we have just released the pictures now? Well, I think that uh, the White House may very well have to revisit this. Uh, if Al Qaeda, for example, uh, airs a stored video of bin Laden, it will only give further fuel to uh, the idea among conspiracy theorists that he wasn't really killed, that he is still alive. Uh, it elevates the myth of bin Laden. Uh, I think people should see how he lived, the opulent uh, life that he was living, uh, and I also think that they should see that he's dead, uh, to put to rest any of these theories. I understand the White House's reservations. I have not yet seen the photos, um, but uh, I think ultimately they may come around the conclusion that this is necessary. Right. I understand that they are gruesome, uh, but I don't think it necessarily inspires anyone. I mean, it, it was not a secret that we were trying to kill bin Laden, right? And so if they see that he has, in fact, been killed, I don't know. I, you know, could it be a deterrent in some way as well? Well, I, I don't agree with Sarah Palin's analysis. I wouldn't do this as a way of showing if you cross us or you commit acts of terror, this is what happens to you. People know that already. Uh, but I do think that uh, there are so many conspiracy theories around the country. There's such a myth about uh, Osama bin Laden that showing uh, he is truly dead and gone uh, has a value to put that to rest, uh, to Gosh, show that I this agree. person wasn't larger than life, in fact, uh, was very much brought down by U.S. military forces. Right. Congressman Schiff, I actually totally agree with you. Look, if you're just doing it to showboat, then that's not the right way to go, and that's not how the United States should conduct itself. But as evidence, that I'm with you and, and actually Senator Graham on this one. That is part of the reason we went on the ground uh, to, to get evidence that it actually was bin Laden. Now on to a different issue. There's a question as to whether this was a kill or capture mission. Let me give you a little video from Attorney General Eric Holder first, and let's come back and talk about it. Let's watch. If he had surrendered, uh, I, I think, uh, attempted to surrender, I think we should obviously have accepted that, but there was no indication that he wanted to do that, and therefore uh, his, uh, his killing was, was appropriate. So what do you think about that? I mean, he's unarmed, yet we say he resisted. Do you, have you sorted out what that means? Well, 
I, I think, frankly, you know, you're talking about a very difficult raid, a nighttime raid. Uh, the last thing that we want to see is bin Laden take out American forces with some kind of a suicide bomb. Uh, so there isn't a whole lot of time to, to think and analyze the situation. Uh, if it were clear he was surrendering and unarmed, that's one thing. Uh, but to, it's hard to imagine that being the circumstances given the, uh, the urgency of the situation. So I, I think our uh, special forces acted perfectly appropriately. Uh, and I think that uh, they probably recognized going in there was a minimal chance they would take him alive. Can you, do you have any insight, Congressman, into the orders that they were given before they went in uh, as to how to execute that? For example, how would they have known that he was trying to surrender? It, it, because it's all in the orders, of course. And, and I'm not criticizing here. I'm just trying to find out uh, if you have any insight into that. Uh, you know, nothing that I can discuss here that uh, wasn't gathered in a classified setting. Uh, I would just say that uh, I fully approve of what our special forces did. They did a, a phenomenal job. Uh, and if 9-11 uh, was the story of not connecting the dots, uh, the hunt and the killing of bin Laden was the story of how our intelligence agencies worked together to connect the dots over a, a great uh, period of time with considerable difficulty, but it is a phenomenal operation. Yeah, there's no question about that. As I've said over and over on this program, I mean, you, it's hard to execute an operation better than this. And uh, it, it does go to uh, one more question, Congressman Schiff, which is what uh, now the GOP is very busy bringing up. Uh, well, none of this operation could have existed if we hadn't tortured folks in the first place. Uh, where do you stand on that? Uh, I, don't, I don't think you could say that uh, yeah, definitively or otherwise. Uh, how can we determine what information we might have gathered had we used other processes? Uh, so uh, I don't think you can point to this uh, as support uh, or opposition to forms of interrogation. I think, frankly, the policy against waterboarding is sound. Uh, it doesn't require us to uh, reexamine the facts here. And part of those facts are going to be unknowable because we don't know what information we would have gotten had we used other techniques instead. All right, Congressman Adam Schiff, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. All right, now let's bring in Sam 